after months and months of planning and organizing, I'm absolutely thrilled to share with you today the story behind the first ever recorded CD with the Atesian Orchestra. What makes this CD so special is the journey towards it. And in this video, I'll talk about three topics that I've learned in this journey towards the CD. Topic number one, a little bit of history about this CD. So what inspired me to do this CD? Well, it kind of happened by chance. In December 2022, so almost two years ago, I had this opportunity to play in a concert at the Brussels Conservatory. And for that concert, we had to make little groups, so maximum 15 musicians, and also programs that are not too long, so maximum 15 minutes. And I stumbled completely by chance on these pieces by Mozart called Missa Brevis. So I found out that he has written at least five or six of them, depending on how you count. And one of them, the Missa Brevis in D minor, we chose and then we played at that concert in December 2022. And, and that actually went very well. It was a success and it really gave us some energy to then move forward with this project of Missa Brevis. So I searched for many other types of Misa Brevis and I actually also asked to living composers, well, do you want to write for us a new Misa Brevis? The only framework given here was the entire text of the Mass should be used. So all the different movements, so Kyrie, Gloria, Credo, and etc. And they needed to use the entire text. However, the composer could use their own writing style to take this text and really reappropriate in their own language. And so I found a first composer, his name is Fabien Fiorini, that was willing to do the exercise and Fabien wrote an entire new Missa Brevis. So historically it started from a concert almost two years ago and then fast forward to 2024, we had four concerts around this theme of Missa Brevis. We had one concert in June, and then two concerts in August, and then one more concert the week of the recording in October 2024. What I've learned, and probably you might say you have also lived similar things, is that it really takes a long time to get to a project. So even though the beginning was almost two years ago, the CD took two years in order to be recorded, and it will take one more year for the CD to be finalized. So this is the first topic about the history I wanted to discuss. Topic number two, how did we prepare for the orchestra in order to make the CD? At the moment that we discussed with the label Cypress about this project, about the Mesa Brevis, to record that, it was over a year and a half ago. And so we accepted, let's go with the project and let's continue. Amazing. But before recording the CD in October 2024, which means a year and a half later than our discussion, I really wanted to find a few concerts, preferably with the same team, before we could make the recording in October. And luckily we found three concerts in different festivals in Belgium, in Brussels and in Flanders, to play the repertoire and so the team could get used to each other and and to really make an atmosphere that could work in a recording session. Now, in practice, even though it would have been nice to use exactly the same team over the different sessions of the Misa Brevis, it was unfortunately not completely possible. A few of the musicians had clashes in their calendar, and so we had to make little changes in the distribution. But overall, I believe the full atmosphere was able to get through these different sessions to form one team during the recording session in October. Point number three, my most challenging aspect of this recording process. Regarding the most challenging aspect of this recording, specifically in the week of the recording itself, a few weeks ago in October, is that it's really time consuming and energy consuming to make a CD. Because what's different with a live concert is that independently of what happens, the show must go on. And so if there are errors, that's okay. We just continue the flow of the music as best as we can and we get back on our feet and we continue the journey during the concert. 
But when we record a CD, we are really aiming for absolute perfection. And so, of course, we needed to record multiple, sometimes five, six, seven takes of the same musical passage in order to really have possibilities that later in the editing stages can be used. And so keeping the energy flowing, keeping track of time during this recording session, this was really one of the challenges that we had to keep in mind during the recording session. Another difficulty was specifically for the singers. It is one thing, of course, to record endless hours of recording with the string instrument, and it's of course tiring. And for singers, it's, it's also hard because they use their own voice. And so we had to really keep in mind how to organize the recording sessions to be able to rest enough, to be able to not do too many takes because we have other takes coming up for the singers. And so flowing with these types of energies was also part of the recording challenges. And the last challenge, I would say for me personally, was that the recording sessions were held in Namur, which is one hour away from Brussels, where I'm based. And so if the recording starts at 10 in the morning, this really makes for a very early start, at least for me. And so going over there in Namur early in the morning means quite short nights during that recording week. Well, this is, of course, for anyone who needs to commute. So here are three points I wanted to share with you today about the recording session that just happened. I'd be happy to hear your reactions, your ideas, if you have yourself recorded a CD or you want to record a CD in the future. Let's start a discussion underneath about how you are envisioning this, uh, what ideas you might have for a CD, and I'd be happy to hear from you guys. So if you stayed until here in the video, you will see over here some old videos on this channel. Be welcome to have a look and see you in the next one.